Hey guys, how's it going? Tonight I want to talk briefly about H.R. 1585, otherwise known as the Violence Against Women Act, and why we must oppose it, and why all of us have to call our senators, write our senators, and do everything we can to inform our friends, our neighbors, our families that we need to call our senators and try to get this bill to where it's dead in the Senate and it will not pass. So, basically a little background information. In 1994, Joe Biden created the Violence Against Women Act program. And this sounds great. And it, and it is great in theory. You know, violence against women. Nobody wants to have violence against women, right? I have some very, very important women in my life, obviously. My mother, my wife, my daughter, and others. So, on its surface, yeah, of course we want to protect women. Here's the problem. The version this year that passed the House. Now keep in mind, this is a bill that requires reauthorization. So every so often, they have to come back and repass this law. Well, instead of just protecting women, which, again, that's great, I'm all for that, what they've done is they've added some extra language to this bill. And people are actually calling it a poison pill. I'm going to call it a little bit of something different. I would call this more of a double entendre, because what they're actually doing here with these new amendments and additions that, that have already passed the House, right, is they're actually changing this now where this is no longer protecting women. This is actually an anti-gun bill. This is a bill designed specifically now with the amendments that are added to it that would have the full force of law, mind you, to not only take away Second Amendment rights for many law-abiding people, but it's also going to make women more subject to violence. Because don't forget, it's not just males that own guns. It's not just people that look like me that own guns. There's all kinds of people that own guns. Specifically women. More and more women every year are relying on carrying a gun, whether with a concealed carry permit, constitutional carry, in the home or otherwise. So when they're restricting the right to keep and bear arms, just remember, the Second Amendment belongs to everybody, including women. So they're actually kind of changing the meaning. They're still going to have the fancy title that this is the Violence Against Women Act. Great, but they're actually going to leave women, who are some of our most vulnerable people, they're going to leave them unprotected without the right to keep and bear arms. So here's what they did. Basically, as you guys know, there's already a long list of classes of prohibited people that are not allowed to purchase or own a firearm. And there's currently about 11 of them. And here's what they're looking to do with this new proposed law, this new bill that's gone, again, through the House of Representatives. The only thing stopping it is the Senate. And they basically added that the latest thing, now one of the things, let me back up, that give, makes you a prohibited person is if you're convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence or if you're subject to a restraining order for domestic violence, harassment, or stalking requiring a court hearing, finding the person restrained was a threat. Well, what they're going to add now is, right now the definition says that it has to be an intimate partner, right, before it's considered to be domestic. What they're going to include now is a dating partner or a former dating partner. Now, keep in mind, this includes crazy ex-girlfriend, right? And for the women out there, this includes that nasty, crazy boyfriend, right? that probably doesn't like you anymore because you broke up with them and maybe you broke their heart, right? That person now, if they have a restraining order against you, that's going to make you a prohibited class of person. Now, keep in mind, when people go to get restraining orders, these are usually ex parte hearings, meaning they're held kind of in a secret court, right? The defendant does not get to face their accuser. The defendant does not get to give their side of the story. So, naturally, many restraining orders are just simply granted by the judge because the judge doesn't ever want to, you know, err on the wrong side and not grant one and then something bad were to happen. So, and most of the time, they just kind of get pushed through and get granted. And I've seen some statistics, and I'm not going to cite the exact percentages because I've read different numbers, but let's say a large percentage of restraining orders are later on found to be wrong and that there was no justifiable reason for said restraining order you know, to be given and to be issued. So they're going to add that, again, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend. It doesn't even have to go that far, though. Just somebody that you've been on a date with. You could have gone on one date with somebody. Maybe someone that's anti-gun that knows you have guns might trick you into going on a date. I know this sounds crazy, but hey, in the days of the Internet, you share everything on social media, 
You might share that you own guns. Someone that hates guns wants to get rid of your guns. They can proposition a date with you. You find the person attractive or cool or you think they'd be fun to hang out with. You go on that date. Now they have standing to file a restraining order against you and have your guns taken away. Literally, you'll become a prohibited person, the same as someone who committed rape, murder, etc. Some of the most serious crimes, you'd be right on the list with them. Now, there's another class that would be those convicted of misdemeanor crimes of stalking, which includes a course of harassment, intimidation, or surveillance of another person. Now, keep in mind, stalking and harassment does not include any physical harm. And in fact, the crime of stalking and harassment is relatively new. Um, the first laws were enacted in California in 1990. And the crime defined to include the creation of either a reasonable fear of material harm or emotional distress to another person. And keep in mind, with some of these prosecutors out there that are a little overzealous, maybe quite a bit anti-gun, they could actually use a series of tweets or a Facebook post that gets somebody upset and causes them emotional distress. These could fall underneath this harassment, which pretty scary, right? How often do people get their feelings hurt nowadays? And just because they get their feelings hurt and they believe that they're under emotional distress, which is a completely, you know, um, completely subjective thing, right? You can't really prove whether somebody genuinely feels something or not, right? So basically all this person has to do is assert in front of a judge that they not feel harassed due to you going on a first date with them. Maybe you went to watch a movie, the movie didn't go very well, and now all of a sudden this person has it out for you and they want to take your guns, right? Maybe you tweeted something to somebody. Maybe you said something that wasn't very nice, but you were never going to hurt anybody. You could now fall underneath these new crimes, which would be a prohibited person. And I would note that in many states, since these are misdemeanors, you get no trial by jury. So you could get convicted of a misdemeanor crime of stalking, which includes, of course, of harassment, intimidation, or surveillance of another person. You could get that without actually being, you know, tried by a jury of your peers. It could be just a trial by bench, as they call it, a bench trial from the judge, which a lot of judges do have political agendas. So this is really scary. This is kind of like the new red flag law, if you will, that's going to kind of slip in a backdoor way where people can be taking their due process from them, no due process, and like Trump said, take the guns first, then due process later. So don't think for one minute Trump's going to veto this. Trump's for red flag laws, guys. Whether you like him or not, that's besides the point right now. Do not rely on Trump to stop this. Now, you might think, well, there's a majority of Republican senators that, that'll probably shoot this down. I wouldn't be so sure. Look at Lindsey Graham's bipartisan hearing that he had, where I did a video on that like a month ago. I couldn't hardly tell the difference between him and Feinstein at certain points. Sounds like Lindsey Graham is rather pro red flag law. I would also note, there's a couple senators up for re-election. And Dianne Feinstein is already trying to berate these Republican senators into looking like they don't care about women. They don't respect women's safety. They don't want to stop, you know, violence against women. Specifically, I've been reading Joni Ernst of Iowa. She's running for re-election. And Dianne Feinstein is particularly starting to berate her and say, if you elect her, you know, to be the senator in Iowa, that she's not going to stand for women, that she's, you know, anti-woman. This is scary. There's a lot of things politicians will do when they have a re-election coming up. And this is another reiteration of red flag laws. This is making it now where, by the force of law, people can turn on one another. And not just turn one on one another with their words like, like how people normally do. No, people can actually strip away one of your fundamental God-given rights that is affirmed, not created, but affirmed by the Second Amendment. This bill would also affect the Fourth Amendment, your Fifth Amendment rights, your Fourteenth Amendment rights. And that's the latest wave of gun control lately, guys. And when this bill says course of harassment, intimidation, or surveillance of another person, does that apply to the federal government? Because I think we all know that they surveil all of us. All of us are under surveillance. I'm under surveillance, and you are for watching this too. Harassment, intimidation. Remember the IRS, what they were doing to conservative groups and others? Is this going to prevent the federal government from buying guns? Are they going to be prohibited people? 
Of course they aren't. This is just going to further the two-class system that these politicians are trying to keep establishing in the United States of America, where there's not equal justice under the law, where there is no more blindfolded lady holding a set of scales and a sword. If they want these laws to apply to us, then they should apply to them too. And then I wonder if they'd be so eager to get these new bills and restrictions and laws passed. And to conclude here, like I said earlier, the fact that they are going to try to make you feel guilty if you oppose this because you don't care about women, that you support violence against women, that couldn't be further from the truth because to pretend that would mean that the Second Amendment only applies to men. And of course it doesn't. The Second Amendment applies to everybody, including women, and especially to women, because oftentimes women need the Second Amendment and their right to keep and bear arms to protect themselves. So as soon as someone tries to tell you that if you're against this bill, that you don't support women, remind them that in fact this bill is going to make it where women are subject to more violence and that it does the complete opposite of protecting them. And remind your senators of that. Because it's not fair for them to try to put this fancy title on a bill and then try to make us feel guilty because we want to protect all people, all lot of Biden citizens, including women. All right, guys, we have to oppose this bill. We have to get it shot down. This is another red flag law, and it's basically a snake oil bill where they're trying to deceive us into thinking that it's something good, but it's not. And call your senator and make sure that it's not deceiving them. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good one.